Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this week's edition of Eyeing the Dream. Today we are in the city of Allentown and we meet a Kenyan who started a business with $30. Today he is not just a proud owner and employer but also he dresses some of the top musicians here in the USA. My name is Bonventure and this is Moving Pictures Kenya, inspiring Africa, connecting people. Basically, I wanted you to take us through your journey from Kenya to the USA because you've told us that you are a Buruburu person. So how did you move from Buruburu okay. to the USA? Well, I think my aspirations to be in this country began at a very young age. I, you know, growing up, we majority of us played sports and um, with everything that you do, you want to be at the place where you're best um, uh, you know, position to succeed. So wanting to play basketball in the U.S. was something that I always wanted to do. So when the opportunity came for me to come here at 19 years old, you know, I relished it and I, you know, and I took it and I found myself in Jersey um, and then uh, as a student and went through the rigors of life in America as an as a international student um, and then eventually finding myself resident here permanently. Um, worked odd jobs. These are some of the things that we sustain ourselves with, you know, when you look at the, you know, at, 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 at just remittances and what Kenyans are doing for the economy. A uh, majority of it is also greatly coming from that. But yeah. um, it was more about fulfillment, you know, and, you know, and the need to, to really do what I felt would be synergetic and definitive of who I am and what my life's purpose is that led me to opening up the store as well as also meeting some of uh, the challenges that you know we might face as a family and wanting to be able to meet those needs um, working smarter and uh, rather than working harder uh, removing myself under the you know the the glass ceiling that employment offers because it does to a certain extent at least in entrepreneurship or by virtue of being an investor you have a little bit more control of how much you could you could bring in and how you could actually be of a, more of a presence in your family's life and you know and set yourself up for a future yeah, okay. yeah you've, you've talked about odd jobs huh? I think maybe maybe that probably wasn't the best the best definition or the best phrase to use um, you know sometimes when we come to the US um, the specific industries that you find majority of us working into because they're easier for us to access whether it be because they're there and they give us the flexibility where we could you know do multiple jobs and make more money or we could still go to school or we could you know do something else as we do this um, so that I guess would have been a better you know definition uh, or, or you know jobs that maybe somebody comes in there still processing you know within the immigration uh, stand of, you know, standpoint of things and they're still navigating their way through through that phase of, you know, of their American experience. Um, yeah, and uh, somebody hearing you for the first time may think you are actually an American. Uh, are you an American <laughs> or are you Kenyan? Because from the way you speak, it's <laughs> not... Mimi <laughs> Kenya. Mimi mm. <laughs> Kenya, you know, but um, Kenyans are very ad ad adaptable people, you know, we are we, we adapt easily and I, I think I credit that a lot to our education system. I think it, it opens up our, our minds and uh, much kudos to the educators in Kenya because they prepare us to be able to be present in, uh, in slots all over the world. I don't think they get enough credit for it, you know, but, uh, but I think we shouldn't take that for granted. And then just being here and uh, being that I was in sports at a very young age and having to interact with other people who we didn't necessarily share the same background. I think that opens you up. Okay. Uh -huh. And then, uh, what inspired you to start business? Because not so many Kenyans here in the USA are doing business. What inspired you? It was hardship for me, you know, hardship and also a desire. I started, I remember, we could go back to 2005. How did we start business? Whew, real life story. I was broke. I only had 30 Kenyan shillings and 30 dollars to my name. So I went to New York, me and my friend Howard, uh, my brother Howard Ambuso. We went to school together in Sunshine. I was broke, broke like a dog, like somebody would say. So, uh, uh, and, uh, so with that 30 dollars, we went and we bought keychains. Uh, during that time, we were younger. Kenyans used to meet 
and uh, you know and have events so I was like Howard man we got to do something we got to do something so we went and we bought keychains and flags stick flags and we sold those to Kenyans uh, and uh, from there it you know just like market research would happen if you went to a market and you were selling something and you got feedback from your clientele you would respond to it so from the keychains and flags came can you get me this can you get me that so the product line kept on increasing and increasing and you know you know being more diverse and we started to do shirts so actually morgan heritage uh much thanks to to them they you know they've worn us in several of their videos the Peter Morgan, Heart of a Lion, he's wearing my shirt. Uh, you know, and you know, you know, Miss Elaine Hewton also is somebody who we really got a lot of support. Uh, much thanks to a sister who actually books her, you know, and you know, and also she's the one who gave us um, the connection with, uh, with Elaine, you know, Kenyan sister who does a lot of um, booking within the reggae industry. Uh, several artists who've actually worn us, you know, but it, 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 all, it, all, it all stemmed from, from hardship. Uh, so we started back in 2005. We used to go to Texas, and I remember we, me and my cousin, we used to rent a car, and we would drive all the way to Texas from Jersey mm -hmm. to go and sell shirts at, uh, at the Dallas Memorial Festival. I remember when here in Jersey, we used to do the Jersey 254, and uh, a good friend of mine, Dennis, uh, from Sambaza Entertainment back in those days, he would, you know, he would give us a platform. Uh, and, you know, him and other persons that he was partnering with, they would, you know, they would give us a platform to be able to sell to Kenyans. And Kenyans from, from Jersey, from Boston, from, you know, from just all over the, the East Coast and the whole of the, the country who would flock into Jersey would, would actually buy and support us. So um, we started with a very Kenyan base. Um, but currently what we do is, you know, has has grown beyond that um, and uh, being in Allentown and having a brick and mortar very different but same principles um, but just on a different level and now selling online to people who we've never seen and uh, and just seeking to grow that mm -hmm. so would I be right if I say you started your business with thirty dollars thirty dollars okay so how much would you say now the business is worth now? <laughs> I can't tell you that. <laughs> that is my secret. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've seen the grace of God. I can't, you know, I can't take full credit for it. And, and people have been very compassionate to us. People have been very understanding. Uh, we faced, you know, we've faced a multitude of challenges. Um, this particular brick and mortar is... Uh, um, we have a strong Afro-American and Caribbean base and, and even a Hispanic base that really forms the base of our support group. Um, you know, so, and these are all predominantly strangers. Of course, I have certain, you know, several die-hearted friends who still support me all the way in Kenya too. You know, here in the U.S., you know, my brother Jeff, Odessi, Hillary, Leon, you know. Um, yeah, and then uh, from the products I've seen around, it would appear like you are stocking quite a number of herbal products. Yes. So would I say, uh, because I've seen Moringa, I've seen mm. Marobaini, so are you stocking herbal products? And oh, yeah. how is the reception here? I think it's needed. I think we are in a time when, um, by virtue of um, the technological advancements that the world has, has had happen of recent and the fact that each and every one of us is walking with a computer in our hands um, we have exponential you know information right in front of us and people are now becoming wiser and they're taking more um, uh, self-responsibility as far as their welfare and as a result of that it, it's leading them back to seeking more holistic ways of living, which I believe is the rightful way of doing it. I believe the planet has given us uh, all that we need for self-sustainance uh, and to heal ourselves. Uh, it might not be uh, what mainstream pharmaceutical companies want to hear, but that, that is the reality. Uh, we've seen a host of our clients uh, heal themselves you know from a multi from from a multitude of conditions high blood pressure diabetes cancer you know seeing a woman who's 70 year old beat cancer in in four months simply by changing her 
her, her mannerisms and you know and what she eats and, and what she doesn't eat uh, stress management you know and, and just people making lifestyle and dietary changes to bring forth um, health and wellness yep. yeah I know sometimes uh, even in Kenya getting herbal product is not easy so for you how do you get your isn't supplies? that a shame isn't that a shame isn't that a shame uh, because when you think about the cost of, uh, of labor in Kenya and from an agricultural standpoint, um, and I hate to say this, unfortunately our country has embraced GMO and um, hopefully we don't get flack for saying this, but um, I think it's very selfish that our politicians have chosen to embrace it knowing that it's detrimental. You see the rates of cancer, uh, you know, a condition that really wasn't that uh, widespread in Kenya and what it has become now. And it's 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 obvious. It's 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 what we consume, and you know we have a tropical climate where majority of what we have in this store is tropical. If we went through all these things here and you saw where they're coming from, you know they're tropical climates, or even if they're not coming from a tropical climate area, they flourish during those times when the climate is you know let me say resembling of what we predominantly have in Kenya. So. Um, Food is our first medicine, and I, it, it, it's sad to see that Kenya is going away from that. And maybe it's because of the way how we as Africans have trained ourselves over time. And I, sometimes I feel like the African experience is very much unlearning what we have been programmed to think about ourselves and relearning how we should feel and think about ourselves and our culture. You know, the whole socialization of how we interact with the West vis-a-vis -vis what we already have in Africa and the self-confidence and the self-love and actually realizing that we are on the richest continent and now practically making that be part of how we live. Africa is capable of self-sustaining. Africa doesn't even trade amongst itself. So I think this is, it really opens up you know Pandora's box you know when we talk about something as simple as the fact that Africa is not embracing herbal medicine it, it really is telling you know so you, do you normally uh, go to different countries sourcing, sourcing for these products or do you have somebody who supplies you at this moment we work with a reputable brand that's based in California that sources all over the world okay. you know so um, you know, they're USDA certified organic, and if there's something that they do that it's not that, that we don't have an organic source, then we'll look for the for the wild crafted alternative for it. That way, we're not dealing with GMOs. Mm -hmm. And then something that I've noticed very interesting with you is uh, the way you look at the USA, because mm -hmm. me, you know, USA is a country, mm -hmm. but you you look at it differently. It's a continent. Why why do you say it's a continent? Because it's a look at its size. Look at its size. I think it, it exponentially, and it's that one. What are the land masses as synergetically connected, like these fifty states? Okay, so you have quite a big market when you look at the USA as a continent. The U yes, and then when you look at the world too, and I think that's for me. I think at where I am in my journey. And I know that I still have a lot more to learn and you know hopefully with time I, I will see things better more in the reality of what they are in a global scope um, you know and hopefully you know the universe will bring me the knowledge that I need to be able to to mature in that you know I, 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 in that aspect I see the US as a as very broad and I, I, I see us as Africans with the ability to find unique market product positioning and being able to flourish because what we offer here is appreciated i think we just need to believe in ourselves and and really seek to compete and and, and do it the right way with a long-term mindset and understand that we're chipping at it every day um, don't try to make it all in one day you know yeah, and then each and every business has a challenge. I don't know what would you say are some of the challenges you've, you've faced over this time in this business? Um, I think the greatest challenge for me is, uh, is me. I think every business is, is, you know, will grow in correlation with the ownership's personal or self-development. Um, 
there is need for much more knowledge. Um, it, it is scary when you hear people come in and they're looking to you for answers. It, it really makes you feel really small because you understand the scope of it all and the responsibility, for, especially from a community standpoint. The people who come here, they come here with their children um, and they're looking to you for guidance with specific conditions or um, or just to fulfill their needs. Whatever they buy is, you know, is fulfilling a specific need or a want. And we here at the Culture Colonel take that path, you know, personally. Whether, whether it's somebody in store or online, they're not just buying because they didn't have something to do with their money. They are looking to meet a specific need and want. And we feel that we are responsible uh, to meet anyone who has chosen our brand. And, and you know making that uh, whatever they hypothesize the reality mm -hmm. okay and, and then I know there are many people who may watch this and want to partner you or support you mm -hmm. uh, what kind of partnership would you want what kind of support would you want we're open we're open I think we have we have our customers here who sell their products um, there's a lady who makes our CMOS bar soaps she's a customer here the lady who made these Yoni steams, she's a customer here. My good friend Eve started off as a customer here. We sell her product all over the country. So um, I think we're accessible, you know, info at culturekernel.com, um, social media, drop us uh, a message in the inbox and we'll try to work through. Um, the nuances of what it would take for us to do business, whether it be wholesale or consignment. Um, and then just being able to find the right fit. You know, I, I think this, you know, the world is a kaleidoscope. You know, we're all different, but we all can find harmony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then in this uh, big continent of USA, there are many people from all over USA who may be interested in your products. Mm -hmm. How will they get to them? Because not everyone will come to this shop. Correct, correct, correct. So we are online via culturekernel.com. K-U-L-C-H-A-K-E-R-N-E-L.com. That's one easy way of getting them. Yes. And then now there are your message to people out there because not so many people know that uh, these herbal products are available in the USA. What mm -hmm. is your message to them? I think nature has provisioned us with um, all that we need to be able to live. And uh, you're watching me from a gadget that has um, the ability for you to access information. So um, I think sometimes it's just a question of the willingness and understanding that um, through information, uh, consuming the right products and making the lifestyle changes that we need to make, we could have a more fruitful, healthier life, both internally and externally, you know, because our skin is our largest organ. So whatever comes into contact with it will vicariously, you know, it's in essence being consumed, uh, you know. Uh, we, f we function on the basis of taking in what they refer to as prana, or life's energy, through sight, through sounds, through sense. So that's where the aromatherapy comes in. Uh, that's where the incense is, the sage, the, the, the scented oils, uh, the singing bowls. And, you know, some of these ancient uh, philosophies that really help us with our mental health and who we are from an emotional uh, standpoint as well, because we are, you know, we're more than just physical beings. We're also spiritual and emotional beings. So just being able to find that balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then maybe before you give us your, uh, your, your parting shot, maybe you can just pick a sample of your products that you think are the top selling so that you can explain to viewers, yeah, this is Morobaini, it's, you know, and then somebody will know that uh, if I go to Culture Canal, I'll be able to get these particular products, just a few, maybe two or three. Quite frankly, our top seller is sea moss, uh, Irish moss, uh, grows in the sea. Um, 92 of the 102 mineral nutrients that our body uh, requires works really well with inflammation. Um, can I can I show them? Yeah. Can I show them? Yeah. One second. Us. Big brother, can I please get one of those? Kim, I'll take a jar, please. Let me get the one with the elderberry there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. These two. That's my big brother Ray. If you come to the store, he will sell you beer butter, even if you don't have a beard. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. yep. So yes, sea moss starts off in this format. It grows in the sea. Okay. So we harvest ours from St. Lucia. I have a friend who actually I was trying to tell about these we have a lot of this in, in Kenya. They've started to harvest this in Tanzania and I'm just, I'm appealing to you Kenyans out there watching this, please learn about sea moss, uh, inculcate it into your diets, help yourself, help your family, live healthier, cleanse your gut, and, and embrace a holistic lifestyle. The earth has given us all that we need to be able to live, uh, let me just say, healthy and, you know, for health and wellness. So. Sea moss, you know, this one specifically has elderberry syrup, so great for immune system boosting, cold and flu management, our top seller. Yeah. Uh, what is the local name for sea moss in Kenya? Whew, do we have a local name for it? You know, I, I really don't know because it's not something that we grew up with in our culture. Now, maybe somebody at the coast might know because, okay. you know, for me, all I knew growing up in Buruburu was tamak. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, but somebody in the coast will probably know sea moss. Uh, you know, so this is the purple sea moss. It, it comes in variant colors. You have a full spectrum one, but it, it really works well with just immune system boosting. Uh, works really well with cleansing our guts. It's great for inflammation because it has flavonoids. It's really rich in the mineral nutrients that our body requires. Um, works really well for people who are going through uh, surgeries and recovery. Um, really great because it's an adaptogen, also helps you with uh, your dopamine serotonin balance. It so really works well with just helping with stress alleviation. Um, and then we do a lot of external body care products as well. Uh, we do a lot of soaps. We have about 42 different variants of GMO free organic shea butter based soaps. We have some that come with charcoal that are really great as far as exfoliation, you know, um, but shea butter really forms an integral part of what we do with that. We also have body washes, you know, we have um, whipped, cream, whipped butters, shea butter whipped butters, great for helping with acne, eczema, psoriasis, hyperpigmentation, yep. And then we do a lot of, um, of, our, of our black seed oil and our herbs. Herbs form an integral part of what we do, but I also really, really don't want to leave out what we bring in from Kenya. We do fashion as well and this is something that we're really within the next couple of months we really will focus on and, and then also just fashion accessories um the bags that we bring in from africa people love them whenever we go for festivals we always sell out of those we do a lot of household goods as well you know so things of this nature that are made in in kenya yeah and we're also bringing in some other items the kisi soapstone is always something that we do as well so we do a lot of these as well yeah, not to, you know, so we, we celebrate things that are, you know, authentically Kenyan. Things that we take for granted, but the whole world, you know, really um, appreciates. That's the uniqueness, that's the unique value that we have as Kenyans. And I think it's high time we embrace it and be willing to put in the time to just let the whole world know and, you know, and consume these products because we have something of value to offer. And then there is another one I saw somewhere. Let me uh -huh. show you. I saw one somewhere. <laughs> I want you to explain it, to explain it to me. Got you. Yeah. This one. Ah, <laughs> man, bro. Iapa. This is actually Kisi soapstone. But the way how it works is this is the map of Africa. This is a, a storage box. But because it's made in Kenya, it has a key. So when you take out Kenya, that's the key. Okay. And then now the storage box will slide open. Oh, nice. Before then you couldn't do that. Yeah. Because Kenya is the key. Kenya is the key to opening Africa. Okay. So that's what it means. Yeah. yeah. So just unique things that we as Kenyans do and now uh, I think just appreciating each each other as Kenyans despite the diversity in our tribes and i think that's one thing that really holds us back is tribalism even here in the u.s and in europe we are still st stupid in our tribalism and we use that as a reason to hold one another back um sometimes we fun we still function within um uh that that that, that i would call it a self-defeatist kind of a mindset you know 
where we fight against each other because we come from different communities. It is, it's nonsense. Yeah. You know, when we could uplift each other. Kenyans are right now, I think we're the third largest African demographic in the U.S. Mm -hmm. And you see what the Somalis have done in Minnesota. They have their own mall. Yeah. So I, I think uh, the Somalis, there's a time that the FBI was actually doing an investigation on them because they were buying houses without taking mortgages. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just the power of community economics. Mm -hmm. But leave it to time. So what is your plan for the future? Ah, uh, to live to, to see tomorrow, because <laughs> that's I'm not even guaranteed that I. Uh, but I, you know, if I if I could charter my future, um, to be healthy, mentally, physically, spiritually, um, to grow, um, and, and and to be relevant, to be relevant as a community based business that still offers. Um, as far as the brand is concerned, it still offers quality products and that has a, a connection with its clientele base and it is still, you know, hinged on customer service. I think I don't want to lose that. You know, sometimes when businesses become big, quote unquote, they, they lose the personability and that um, the people that we will work with here, whether they be as employees or partners in any form, that we will find synergy. And that we'll be able to to find oneness in that okay. you know where we would put our clientele base first and that people will won't find it hard to do so that we would find the the people who fit into that kind of a mindset so it's just a question of being around the right people consistently okay and in mm -hmm. terms of expansion yes i like i had mentioned hopefully within the next couple of months we'll be out of here we've been here for four years we've ramped shot with this so hopefully the next time you come will be in a bigger in a bigger premises mm -hmm. yep and uh and push it from there you know but i, I think there's a you know there's a there's an artist that i love you know i love my reggae music so yesterday i was listening to assassin and he said Every man I look at start. Everyone is looking for something to start with. So that's that's my story. If you if you forget anything about me, I just want people to remember that that everyone is looking for a start. And if your start will mean thirty Kenya shillings or the thirty dollars, take that thirty, make it forty-five. Make the forty-five sixty, the sixty ninety, the ninety one twenty, and everything to its infinite place. Um, it's very basic it's it's very simple you know and you know don't get ahead of yourself just look for your start and keep going yeah mm -hmm. so for me i'm grateful i want to appreciate for what you are doing to other people here because i know these products are not easy to come by mm -hmm. and um, i'm happy that you took that step because now people can live healthy and i all only wish you the best for the future. I appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to come and visit with us. When I got the call from you, I was uh, I was greatly enthused, and I I also wish you great success. And uh, I know that we will continue, you know, to network and grow together. Subscribe, 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 yeah. subscribe, <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> yeah, the channel is called Moving Pictures Kenya, and the program is called Eyeing the Dream. Okay. I appreciate Phil for he is eyeing his dream, he's living his dream and hopefully we'll see him somewhere up there. And we will come with you. Asante sana. Asante. <laughs> and when you get there before me, bring me. I'll, I'll, I'll pull you along. Okay, that it is. That's <laughs> Asante. it. Asante. Asante. Mm. Thank you.